Hi, this was just sent in from Banggood. It's a two-top IR502 battery tester for testing battery internal resistance. I guess this is a rather niche item, and in this video we'll take a look at how well it works. And later we'll open it up and take a look inside. As usual, I will leave a product link in the video description below in case you want to get one after watching this video. So there are roughly two ways to test a battery's internal resistance. The simplest way is by drawing some current and measure the voltage drop across the battery terminals, and through some simple calculation we can derive the internal resistance via Ohm's law. The internal resistance obtained by this method is essentially delta V over I, the value of the current. Or more accurately, instead of using a simple current value, we can derive the resistance using two different current values. Using this method, the internal resistance would be delta V over delta I. Another method is the so-called AC conductance method. And with this method, an AC signal with a frequency of around 1 kHz is typically used. And the battery's internal resistance is modeled as complex impedance, which includes elements of resistance, capacitance, and even inductance. This method is actually very similar to how an LCR meter measures capacitor's ESR, or equivalent series resistance. Of course, most of the LCR meters cannot measure components with significant DC bias, but this meter is specifically made for testing batteries, so of course it will have no issue handling the battery voltages. According to the product manual, it mentioned that this meter uses a 1 kHz AC signal for the measurements, so I believe it uses the AC conductance method I mentioned earlier. Looking at the specifications here, you can see that the maximum input voltage is at 120 volts plus minus, and it can measure internal resistance up to 500 ohms. One thing a little bit odd is the choice of the connector used for the input probes. Now, these are Kelvin clips, as you can see here, which are common for low resistance measurement. And if you look at the clips themselves, you can kind of see, let me use the red one, so you can see here, not sure how well it shows up, but if you look at the connectors here, you will see that we do have two wires coming out of this cable, and they're soldered separately onto each of the clips on either side. So these Kelvin clips are properly configured. But what is odd is actually the connector, and they're using this DB9 connector that is typically used for RS-232 connections. In the manual, you did have a wiring diagram for the connectors, so I suppose you could always make your own if the supplied cable is damaged. It would be more universal if they chose the standard binding posts for banana plugs instead of using the DB9 connector. Anyway, I guess let's power it on and take a look. But let's first connect the probes. And we still have this sticker here. Let's uh, remove the protective film before use. It's a little bit difficult to remove. Oh, look at that. It's quite shiny here. All right, so let's power it on. Well, I have to say though, the manual was a little bit confusing, but I think I finally understood how this meter is supposed to work. Although the manual was a little bit confusing, the user interface is actually quite intuitive. You can see that when we power it up, we are in this automatic mode, so we can start measuring right away. Now, if you do want to change the ranges, you can press these two buttons. So this one controls, for example, the resistance range. You can see now we're in 10 milliohms, 100 milliohms, 1 ohm, 10 ohm, 100 ohm, and finally 500 ohms. So these are the available ranges for the internal resistance. And here, this button, we can cycle through the different voltage ranges. You can see here. And now we're back to auto. And if you look at the supplied manual here, you will see that it does tell you the testing conditions under different ranges. Also, the associated accuracy here. You can see that we essentially are using two different currents for the measurements, depending on the ranges used. Now, before I test out batteries, let me actually take a look at the waveforms here. As I suspected earlier, this battery tester uses an AC signal to perform the testing. All right. Now I have hooked up the output to an oscilloscope. Let's take a look at the measurement here. 
So as you can see, we're indeed getting a sinusoidal from the output. It's at roughly 1 kHz, as you can see the frequency counter here, and the peak-to-peak -peak value is roughly just over half a volt. And also you can see that the output is paused. Once in a while, you do get this glitch. All right, let's take a look at a few batteries. Now, I don't have a reference battery tester, so we will have to take our measurement results with a grain of salt. The first battery I'm going to test is a brand new AA battery, and it's alkaline battery, so let's take a look here. By the way, these Kelvin clips are really hard to use, especially if you don't have a proper holder here. Anyway, let's give it a go. And you can see the resistance reading is all over the place because I'm not holding it properly here. And if I get a good contact, you can see it's at 122 milliohms, and the voltage is 1.58 volts. So let's actually take a look at the voltage measurement to see if that is accurate. Give or take, the voltage readings are largely in line with what we see on the multimeter here. Of course, that's with the automatic internal resistance measurement. So let's actually change it to, let's say, 1 ohm range. And let's do it again. So we just manually set that maximum to 1 ohm. And you can see that, yeah, we're still reading that 115 milliohms. So that feels about right. Of course, we don't know the exact measurement, but we don't have any other equipment to cross-validate. Now let me set the range to auto again. The next battery we're going to test is a somewhat used C battery. So you can see that we're measuring roughly 130 milliohms internal resistance here. And now let's move on to a 9 volt battery. Now, this one is also used, so I suspect the internal resistance would be much higher. So let's try to clip it on. And you can see we're actually measuring 1.5 ohms in terms of the internal resistance. And let's just double check the voltage here. you can see that these two meters largely agree. Next, I want to take a look at a coin cell. I would expect the internal resistance to be much, much higher. It's a little bit hard to hold here. So let's just try again. And you can see once it stabilizes, we're measuring about 167 ohms. One last battery I want to measure is a lithium ion battery. This one should have a very low internal resistance. So let's give it a go. And you can see we're measuring roughly 30 milliohms internal resistance here. Now, in theory, you should be able to use this meter to measure resistors. And let's actually take a look at how accurate it is. Here is a precision 100 ohm resistor with a 0.1% tolerance. So let's take a look. And the measurement is quite a bit off. We're reading here 101.5 which should be right around 100, as the tolerance is 0.1%. So this reading is clearly outside of the tolerance. Now, just to double check, let's use the unit T here. Let's go to the ohm range, and I'm going to zero it out. So let's rail it out, and Let's try to stand it up. 
and you can see we're measuring right around 100 ohms. So clearly this meter is quite a bit out. Now let's try it with another resistor. This one is a power resistor, so let's actually take a look at its measurement first. This should be a 1 ohm resistor. And you can see we're measuring roughly 1 ohm. So now let's take a look with this battery tester here. And we're actually reading 1 ohm, no problem. So it appears at a lower resistance range, the measurement is more accurate here. Well, you may say that this meter was not designed for measuring resistors by itself. Well, if that is the case, we can verify the readings with a battery in series. So let's actually do that. So let's put the 100 ohm resistor in series with this lithium ion battery. We just test it. And you can see that the reading is still 101.5. So definitely there's some inaccuracy in the measurement of this meter. Now, there is a calibration procedure documented in the manual, and it calls for some precision resistance values, like 5 milliohms, 50 milliohms, so on and so forth. And unfortunately, I don't have precision resistors of these values, so I'm not going to calibrate this unit here. This meter also has a few other modes. If you press the mode button, you can see we can set, it is called filter, but it's really not. This is really just for binning your components. You can set the filter the low value, and high value. Basically, when the components is outside the range, it will give you a warning. So that's what that filter is. And of course, you can long press this button, and it will turn on the light here. Where's the light? Yeah, the light is up here. And you can press it again, it will turn off. And here is the backlight, I guess. Yep, you can turn off the backlight. Not sure why you want to do that, but you can turn the backlight on again. And here we have the keypad sound. So that's all the features there is on this unit. Now let's open it up and take a quick peek inside. And by the way, it's using a 1.25 amp hour battery here. So let's take a look at the power consumption. Right, zero it out. Let's power it on. And we're consuming roughly 140 milliamps. So that will last you for about 9, 10 hours. Not a problem. Well, this is quite disappointing. As you can see here, all the markings on the ICs have been etched off. So we don't know what exactly they're using here. But the board layout does look decent. If you look at the bottom here, you will see that we have these moldings. Now, interestingly, these look like holders for banana plugs. So my guess is that this design, at least for the case, is probably designed for multiple products, and one of which is presumably a multimeter. And that's all there is in this meter. So here's the verdict. Although it might not be as accurate as is stated in the manual, I suppose it is still useful when doing some relative comparisons. For instance, if you wanted to match batteries. Now, if I do get another battery tester in the future, I will probably do some accuracy comparison. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.